Well, let's go back to the European Union leaders' meeting, and, and it is an extraordinary meeting uh, set to discuss measures to shore up their borders a day after Interior Ministers agreed to share 120,000 refugees through mandatory quotas. Let's go live now to Stephen Wolfe, who is the member of the European Parliament for North West England, is also the Migration and Financial Affairs spokesman for the United Kingdom Independence Party, known as UKIP. Stephen, thanks very much for joining us. You are not in favour of the message being sent by European leaders by accepting these asylum seekers, are you? Well, we're not in, in, in favour of a bunch of unelected commissioners uh, deciding how many people should go to a sovereign country. I want to put it in the context of yourself. If you're in a trade relationship with China and Hong Kong and Singapore, imagine having one of their civil servants telling you how many people that Australia should take as refugees and not decided by your own Prime Minister, your own Cabinet and your own Parliament. That's why we're opposed to it. Do you think that's not really the deal that you get for being part of the European Union, that sometimes you will have to be a part of decisions that are, are difficult? Well, of course, you're going to be part of decisions which are difficult. But one of the aspects about the European Union is, yes, you can have freedom of movement, but actually the asylum policy is not necessarily an issue that should be decided by governments. And this is one of the things that we oppose the European Union, is that it's important to have friendly relationships with your neighbours, just as it's important to have friendly relationships with other people across the globe, Australia, the United States, etc. But decision makings on important things like this should be made by your own government. How, so you're saying leave it up to individual countries, but what you are seeing across Europe daily on our television screens, an absolute tragedy unfolding of thousands and thousands of people arriving and some countries taking more of a burden than others. Absolutely, and I agree. And I, but we have said uh, on many occasions, this is not a European Union problem alone. This is a world problem. And so I'm deeply, deeply surprised that the United Nations has not called together an emergency meeting, as they did during the 1980s when I was growing up and we had all the pro problems in Ethiopia. We had Feed the World as a, a big movement going across in music and entertainment. But the United Nations has stayed quiet. And more than that, the neighbours to Syria, where a vast number of the most immediate uh, refugees are coming from, are doing absolutely nothing. Look at Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Dubai. These are very wealthy countries and they've not accepted one refugee. The burden is being placed on Europe when all the problems related to this were a world issue. It was the world that decided to go into Afghanistan and Iraq. There are other countries that got involved in regime change in Syria and Libya. And all of us have to blame with the economic problems that are going through in Africa. Uh, there are countries like Lebanon and Jordan, though, who are taking much more of a burden than Europe. Absolutely. And this is why we said it should be a United Nations issue involving the whole world. What the UN has said is that currently on the borders from uh, Libya going all the way to Turkey, there are just over one million people waiting to try to get into the European Union. But more importantly, in the north of Africa, coming across that northern regime area, there are 59 million displaced people. It is not conceivable that the Europe can take all of these people at once that it's not conceivable that we can take them over a period of time. And unless we solve the problems in Syria and Libya and in northern, uh, 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 in terms of Afghanistan and Iraq, we are not going to be able to solve all the issues of these people coming across to so, Europe. So just to be clear, when you say the UN should resolve it, would you accept the UN uh, uh, coming up with quotas for, for, for the burden to be shared? Well, if the UN comes up with a quota regime, then we will have to consider exactly the proposals based on that. I think the, the important part that you have to consider, and I've heard this argument, people are not using their fair share. Well, what does fair share mean? At the moment, one definition, it should be just rich countries taking those in more. What about those with higher densities? Germany, I understand, can take up to 60 million people before they share the same density levels as that of England in terms of population. So you have to look very carefully at how you're defining this and how you distribute it. The key point is, though, the people will still keep coming unless the UN and the world takes big issues on how we deal with Syria and Libya, how we deal with Afghanistan and Iraq, and how we deal with the poverty in Africa. Stephen Wolf, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.